right now the total amount tracking Bitcoin and ETF now is about $70 billion. I compare that to gold, which is stuck around $184 billion. It's about 40%. So massive inflows and the having the cut in supply basically around tax day. It's a pretty significant sweet spot for Bitcoin. But what I find most significant lately is the fact that Bitcoin is showing divergent strength versus beta with the S&P 500 down this morning. Yeah, I guess one thing about Bitcoin, though, is that is a question about volume. We've got a supply shortage, and yet there's tens of billions of dollars trading every day. How do you square these two things? Well, it, it's not so much a supply shortage, shortage, I guess. It's just you can see it coming down. It's something that it's the high price cure that affects all commodities with the exception of gold. You don't have that supply coming on with higher prices. But I love when you mention volume because I love clicking on coinmarketcap.com and checking volume. And the, the volume of Tether, the number one traded token, um, which is the U.S. dollar, is basically double Bitcoin on a 24-hour basis. And its, it's market cap's up to 120, 102 billion now. So it's one thing that a lot of people don't know in the space is Bitcoin is speculative. Yes, it's a replacement for gold. It's a digital version. But in this space, the most widely traded asset is the dollar. When you look at, say, the offshoots of crypto, like the stocks, the exchanges, the miners, etc. Are they trading as well as the underlying asset? Yes. Well, I guess we have to mention MicroStrategy. We've all heard Michael Saylor. I just saw him on a few other programs recently. On a one-year basis, MicroStrategy is up almost 600% compared to Bitcoin, up 230%. And the significance of him is he's been buying Bitcoin. He's one of the sages that really got me somewhat bullish a few years ago when he's pointing out the history. And he says, hey, the, the world's going digital. This is a potentially a replacement of the dollar, not so much a dollar, but of gold. And he's been converting a lot of micro strategies strategy to buying Bitcoin rather than doing other things in, in technology. I guess, but if you go back to your point that we started out with on the ETF flows, I mean, who are the winners and losers here amongst the ETF providers? I mean, is this still a BlackRock versus everyone else story or is there mm. something more interesting to think about there? The biggest winner is Grayscale. Um, they're the ones, so we've got to remember, well, they kind of tilted this over. Michael Schoenstein of Grayscale was the one who initiated the litigation with the SEC and he took a major risk I call profiles and courage and he won so right now grayscale um, the GBTC, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, is about $28 billion, and the next is the iShares, iShares Bitcoin Trust, about $13 billion. But the thing about iShares Bitcoin Trust is that didn't exist just a few months ago, and Grayscale was higher. So a lot of that money has migrated, but now it's just net inflows. And I think it's at the stage where we're hearing this from professional money managers are tilting that way. And that's what really struck me when I went to the ETF conference about a, a month ago in uh, uh, Miami. Eric Balchunas moderated panel, and there was so much much interest from these, you know, I'd say professional money managers in Bitcoin. Well, that really, that's my question. Do, if all of a sudden Bitcoin, for whatever reason, sort of tanks 20,000, right? It's super volatile asset, right? Like no one's pretending that it's not. Do those people that want a 1% allocation in their portfolio to Bitcoin care? Or is this now a long buy and hold strategy with some traders trading around the volatility? Well, obviously, it's the number one traded, I like to call it the number one traded asset on the planet 24-7, number one leading indicator, Alex. But I think what's happening now is we're in the early days of the institutional, the RIAs, the pension funds, endowments getting allocated in this space. They're starting with 1%. Yeah, of course, they care, but they're, they're, the back tests look too good, unfortunately. I like to pair it with gold. And I think it's one of those spaces where it's, it's Either way it goes, it's just it's just the early days of those, those inflows. What thing really shocked me was I didn't think there would be that much interest in, the, in these ETFs. And you just got to follow the money. It's very strong inflows. Yeah, you know, as you say, it's early days for this ETF strategy. And how do you compare this to the birth of other ETFs markets? Like, what can we expect? Can we expect a whole lot more players or is it all going to get weeded out very quickly? That's the thing. It's broken all the records compared to GLD or even SPY, their early days. It's it's broken all the records. It's it's basically the benchmark now for each, and I don't think we'll ever be able to match it. The thing is, I compare it somewhat in, to Tesla. Tesla pays, pays spends nothing on advertising. They don't have to because everybody loves Tesla. Bitcoin's the same way. There's nothing to advertise it, but it's so in your face. It's one of those things I put on my DI list. I try to deliberately ignore, but I can't because you just hear about it and read about it everywhere. So that to 
economy is what's happening. It's just that significant of an asset at the moment. And at some point, yes, it should have a good correction. The key thing that's been bothering me is we've had basically straight up in the S&P 500 since that low in October, no correction. The most significant correction was the first week of the year is 1.5%. But we've had good corrections in gold, which founded a good foundation. We've had good uh, corrections in Bitcoin, which formed a good foundation. You know, flushes out the week longs. We haven't had that in the stock market. And that's what I'm afraid we're way overdue for. Just mm-hmm. a normal 10% correction, you know, like used to happen. How does Bitcoin respond in that space? And I think what's happening now, sure, it should go down, but we think the response of buyers will be greater in Bitcoin. 